All right, welcome everybody. Today we're uh, with experts checking the box. Today here with Aryan and Arun. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning. And uh, go for today is to look at how can you deploy Pega, which options are there uh, as customer, how can you deploy it, and maybe can you also mix them. So that's what we're gonna check out today. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the video. So let's welcome our guest today, Arun. I think Arun, eh? you're an experienced Pega lead system architect, solution architect at BPM company. And quite experienced is also with how you deploy Pega and how you migrate it. Yes. Uh, Anything to add? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I am a Pega lead system architect, but I'm also a cloud solution architect. I have uh, quite some experience working on Azure uh, and uh, Kubernetes. I'm also a certified Kubernetes developer. And in the past few years, my focus has been in the space of deploying Pega in, you know, multiple uh, ecosystems, on-premise, client-managed cloud, you know, etc., etc. Cool. What is that your interest? What interests? Uh... Well, the public cloud and the offerings, I think, the, uh, the speed at which the public cloud evolves to solve, you know, uh, problems uh, and to provide solutions uh, uh, for businesses, I think that interests uh, me a lot. Yeah. Now we'll get all your info today, so let's see. And Ayan, welcome. Also, yeah, thank I think, you. Uh, experience as uh, senior system architect, also solution architect at BPM company. And I think if I say it well, maybe more also as a solution architect, but maybe a bit more on the functional side of things. Do I say that right? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. So I also used to work as a uh, business analyst, lead business analyst of customers, and I uh, do uh, investigate uh, all the technologies that are available, but more abstract, higher level. Um, and what I do focus on on different customers is how do you get to the right solution? Eh? So not only on cloud, but in general. So how do you help them look at it from different angles so they can make the right decision for their situation? Yeah, ah, cool that we have you two guys here, a bit more one on the technical and, and the functional side. So I think that's really gonna help in uh, looking at the options. So let's get started. Yes, and today we'll look at the uh, Pega deployment options. And uh, I think also uh, yesterday evening looked again at the options. I know them from heart, but actually I saw one option which I didn't identify myself. So the options we'll look in today is uh, on premise. I think Arjan and I have quite some experience in the past from uh, working on premise, uh, cloud choice, and then of course if you're on the cloud, it's or you're on Pega Cloud, uh, customer client managed cloud, and uh, partner managed cloud. And I'm uh, especially the last one. I uh, I'm interested to see the difference there. What are the options? So uh, let's uh, dive into these options, guys. All right. So the first option uh, we'll look at. I think it's the option uh, we all have experience in for quite a while, the on-premise uh, so on-premises, and the way they'll stay to tell you're running your stuff on-site in your own uh, data data center or on your own servers. Yeah. And uh, maybe before we get dive into, how much years uh, experience do you both have uh, working Pega on-premise environments? I have for me, I think around six years or something. Yeah, that's quite some. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me even maybe slightly more, something yeah, like eight like, years. Yeah, eight years. So. Yeah, oh. that's a lot. <laughs> I think there might be people listening in having no experience running on premise, so they're probably quite interested. So, um, yeah. can you tell a bit, like what's yeah, what's the setup? What what does it mean uh, running on premise? Yeah, so basically on premise is uh, uh, is one of the options which was uh, a lot in use. I would say uh, till a few years ago, I think five, six years ago, before the uh, whole cloud journeys kicked in, I think most of the organizations were on-premise. Uh, so on-premise would mean that organizations have their own data centers, uh, small or big, uh, and then they install Pega to run on their own data centers. But this also involved a lot of work, uh, especially uh, because, you know, Pega would also need supporting services to be deployed besides it. For example, it needs a relational database, right? So that would mean that if you're deploying it on on-premise system, you have to run a database uh, server, and then of course, uh, also do operations on the database server, right? So uh, backup, retention, recovery, high availability, you talk about it and 
you have to do it right yeah. i have to talk to your dba you have to talk in-house. to your dba in house as well right uh, because they are the ones who are controlling the database services right so that is just one bit uh, but of course pega needs more than just a database server and a web server or an application server right um, so yeah traditional deployments on premise would typically mean that before you start developing in pega you spend a couple of months more than a few months to try and set up pega for your ota uh, and your production environments uh, right yeah. yeah probably compared to maybe pega cloud where you directly exactly have an environment provided for you yes uh, so the lead time uh, to start working in pega for new customers was quite some Uh, lead time right so before you started developing in pega uh, you need to build the systems deploy it on your servers uh, uh, you know make sure that you have covered all your non functional requirements when you say non functional requirements means you know high availability for example backups restores how are you going to do disaster recovery uh, how are you going to manage your secrets uh, for example in your on premise system how do you implement our back uh, you know role based access controls who gets access to what piece of the infrastructure you know so you need to design and build uh, such a system uh, before you start developing in pega yeah uh, quite some work uh, as a customer i mean a question to i on them yeah. uh, cuz i think it seems like more customers are moving to the cloud uh, cloud solutions do you still still see customers choosing for on premise is that still is it still not yeah, no, some customers definitely too? still uh, still exist but uh, at a certain point it also becomes an abstraction layer right i mean especially in the larger companies um they have a lot of these in-house solutions already there so they all need to be set up and configured but of course a lot of these things are already there so they need to be done but you don't necessarily notice all this effort taking place for your pega teams of course you have interaction because you need to define what you need uh, but it is taken care of you so it's Yeah, it's also where you look at, right? So from an organizational total perspective, you're doing all this on-prem stuff, but not necessarily for your Pega project people. Uh, yeah. So that's why they maybe sometimes don't no- don't notice this or don't see it's an on-prem solution and what is all involved in maintaining and setting it up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah advantages and disadvantages. We'll look at in the next video. Yeah. I'm burning with questions, but. Uh, I think for now this uh, option is clear. Anything to add to the option uh, on premise? Uh, no, I think uh, it's clear. Uh, let's go into the other options then. Uh, well, so the other options which Pega uh, supports uh, on cloud, or the, as they call it, the cloud choice uh, program, uh, wherein you have two distinct set of services. So one is Pega Cloud, uh, which uh, is sort of a saas offering so software as a service offering from pega uh, which probably gives you um, the fastest uh, return on investment basically so if you buy pega as a solution it's also like how soon can you go to the market right and it all starts from how soon can you start developing and basically taking the application to your end users yeah it's quite comfortable if you i know from basically directly have an environment so exactly yeah. exactly so that offering is wherein pega is responsible for basically spinning up the instances um making sure uh, that the operations part is covered uh, so basically there are people looking at your infrastructure to make sure that it's up and running all the time uh, there are sla's uh so service level agreements defined on the uptime of the environments as well so it's a very robust solution uh from uh pega uh, which basically uh enables any new customers to quickly start building their applications and focus on uh providing business value to their end customers yeah and with pega cloud you're actually running on uh, aws Uh yes so behind the scenes pega uh is deployed on AWS uh, basically so they make use of uh, uh, the uh, the platform as a service services from AWS to build their infrastructure uh, of course uh, but what helps the most is that you have a single uh window uh, to all your issues whether it be it infrastructural issues so you know there are issues with your infrastructure you open 
uh, a cloud change or a service request on the uh, on the support portal. And if you have any issues with your uh, uh, product, the Pega product itself, you do the same. So it's sort of one window for all your issues. All right. Sorry, we got a bit interrupted by Teams chat uh, notification popping in, but uh, I think we left off from uh, Pega Cloud. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you, but is there? Do you know why they uh, also see for the for the other cloud options? If you run it yourself, you can also uh, go to Azure or Google Cloud Platform. Do you know if they are they gonna stay in AWS or is Pega maybe also in the future gonna also provide their services from other platforms? Uh, yes, but if you're using a SaaS option of Pega Cloud, basically it doesn't matter to you where uh, Pega runs its infrastructure, you know, as long as uh, the infrastructure is available to you and in the region of your choice, right? So if you are uh, a customer based out of Europe, uh, you want to make sure that, um, uh, you know, your applications are still within running within EU boundaries, right? So as long as Pega is running and meeting that commitment, you actually uh, uh, do not care. So it's sort of an abstraction layer for you. Right? Yeah. So what Pega chooses in the background to run its own infrastructure, uh, you're not concerned. It does make it easier if you have, are building an interconnected uh, applications in Pega, right? So connecting, if you have everything in Azure in your organization, yeah. it does make it easier if the Pega would also run in Azure. Well, you might yeah. run into problems if it's uh, uh, Amazon versus as no, well. no, not really. I think it's uh, the organization, organizational choices. Um, so where you run the rest of your infrastructure versus Pega Cloud, I don't think it matters a lot. You can always connect. So Pega also guarantees that you can connect these environments to your on-prem systems or to your uh, uh, cloud environments. So if your cloud environments are in Azure, for example, and Pega is running on AWS, well, you can have a VPN connection between uh, both those environments so that your services can talk to each other basically yeah. right but you have to set it up but i heard yeah. you say an interesting thing and that's the fact where do you run your service for some clients that's uh, quite interesting uh, maybe a question to Ion uh, also do you know of customers who really had that as a fixed requirement like uh, and how did they deal with choosing from the options uh no yeah, that can definitely have an impact that can be both either for a specific technology choice that is in the technology standards eh, in, the, in the, the overall uh, enterprise architecture standards, uh, or it can be more of an abstract term like we prefer uh, SaaS solutions, eh, like you said, uh, yeah. above PaaS, above EaaS, um, and that might impact your choices. Eh? If it's more related to SaaS, above PaaS solutions, then you would uh, go for, for back on more easily. But it can also state like we, we don't want to run on uh, AWS, but on Azure. And then you have a different discussion uh, on looking at the options. Yeah, yeah, because with the EU, uh, where do you want to host it? Uh, from now from a project that you could at least choose your data center also of AWS. So that helps. Exactly, yes. yes. But, uh, all right, and I think, yeah, Pega Cloud, let's move to uh, Client Managed Cloud. Eh? What's the I think it's obvious uh, what it is, but yeah, can you dive in a bit more? Yeah, so uh, uh, so the Pega Cloud Choice Program basically guarantees that uh, you can run your Pega infrastructure in uh, in public cloud. Eh? So those uh, installations are certified by Pega. That means client managed cloud would basically mean that you have your own uh, cloud subscription whether it is in uh, Azure or AWS or Google Cloud, and you basically build all your Pega infrastructure in uh, public cloud in your own subscription. So client managed would mean that the client is responsible basically for their own infrastructure, right? Yeah. Uh, and if you look, because I see here, you have AWS, Azure, Google Cloud Platform. Yeah. Probably they're comparable. Um, yeah. Are they, or what are the differences when you run Pega? Which no, platform? no, they are comparable, uh, all three of them. So it's it's a matter of uh, enterprise uh, uh, choice, you know, as to which cloud provider do they sign up. What we have seen is, uh, at least in uh, Netherlands, uh, you know, that a lot of companies do sign up for both Azure and AWS uh, together, and then make a, a distinct choice 
uh, on their business unit level to say that okay this business unit might use azure this might use aws or the whole company uses one of the cloud providers uh, but since pega supports their installations in all of these uh, cloud platforms uh, basically it, there is no difference uh, in that sense and i can imagine especially imagine as customer if you already have a one uh, environment set up maybe for other IT applications, it's yeah. logical that you move that. Is that also what you uh, have been seeing or how do, how do customers choose their cloud provider? How do they choose between the three? I think that's also a little bit of a teaser for the second video. Yeah, I think in the end it's important that you know what you try to achieve with your infrastructure. So each of these solutions have certain advantages and disadvantages which we will talk about in the second video. Um, and you need to know what's important for you. And that, that basically leads to one of these choices. And of course you prefer if they already thought about that in their technology standards that are part of your enterprise architecture. Uh, so you can rely on that and make a fast choice on these options if you are aware of what is important for you as an organization. Yeah. Okay, you can maybe give an example. So what is... Uh, yeah, it's can, it can be all kinds of different things. Yeah? So it can be something regulatory based. Yeah? Are you allowed to run your data at certain places that, that can impact one choice over the other? Um, how much control do you need? And uh, Arun also mentioned already, for example, things like disaster recovery, or high availability, they're all available to one degree or another in all these solutions. But depending on the amount of control you need in that or certain types of solutions, it might lead to one solution over the other. Yeah, clear. Yeah, and I guess if you also have some knowledge or experience already setting that up, that's also, probably yeah, favorable definitely. to stick with yeah. a certain option. Yeah. And then I see this option now, and I had a, an essay when I read it, I didn't think about it. Partner managed cloud. Uh, cloud environments are owned and controlled by business partners. How would you... Uh, yeah, Did so you see this as an option yourself? And can you explain a bit? Well, well it could be an option. Um, uh, so this is wherein your environments are managed by a third party which is not PEGA, right? Uh, so there's a service provider for example uh, who uh, builds and manages these environments for you uh, in the public cloud of your choice and that's what the partner managed cloud is what they refer to, right? So if you have any issues with your infrastructure you get in touch with your partner who is managing your solution and raise those issues with them. So this is sort of a in between solution to the Pega cloud option and uh, the client managed cloud, right? So this is an in between option to both, right? Okay. I, want, I, get, I get the uh, end assistant where the, uh, your service, your operations yeah. are done by that partner. Yes. Um, yes. But that's also done with Pega. What, what's, is, are there any differences in there? If Oh, well, the, that's a good one. I would not know what are the differences in there. The only thing that pops into my mind is basically uh, the costs, probably, right? And the amount of control. So if it's a partner managed cloud solution and you have your rest of your infrastructure also being managed by the same partner, that means it's easier to integrate your Pega applications, for example, to other applications and services within your ecosystem. And uh, because you're, there's just one partner for all of your services, you know, you get an advantage in terms of operations, costs, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the only yeah. thing that pops into my mind, why you would choose for a partner managed cloud solution instead of a Pega cloud yeah. solution. Now, if, uh, like you said, some of the advantages of a, uh, and a client managed cloud are important to you, but you don't have the capacity or the knowledge to do it. Yeah. And then it might uh, not only be cost, but also just, yeah. You can't do it yourself, but you do want to have those benefits. Yes. Clear. All right. I think we discussed uh, all the options. In the next video, uh, we'll get more. I think we already touched a bit of maybe advantages, disadvantages, pros, cons between the options. But yeah. we'll dive more into uh, the next one. So uh, thank you a lot for your input. Thank you.